DocuWay has developed a solution for employee management based on our vast experience building human resources applications over the past 30 years. The DocuWare Kinetic solution for employee management provides automated electronic processing and archiving for several aspects of the employee management process, starting with recruiting and onboarding, personal time off accrual and requisition, and regular performance appraisals, as well as the documents associated with separation. Today we will look at an example of how DocuWare can help manage and automate the recruiting process. Documents within this employee management system are broken up into three different categories. Those are HR-only documents, employee-only documents, and departmental documents. So whenever a, lo a user logs in and connects to the system, they are presented only with the documents that they are authorized to view. In this example, I have Peggy Jenkins. She's an employee at Peters Engineering. When I enter into her folder view, she looks within the employee files file cabinet and sees her name. And as she drills through the hierarchy, her first name, and then those employee and departmental employee documents that she has access to. The employee only documents would be, for example, her W-4. An example of maybe employee and departmental documents might be her PTO requests and her employee appraisals. These have two different categories because they are not only exposed to her, but also to her department manager. If we were to switch users now to Simon Stone, Simon is the HR administrator. He now has access to all the employees' information. You'll see here an expanded list of all of the employees within the company. And if I were to select the same employee, Peggy Jenkins, the hierarchy would be expanded to show not only those departmental and departmental employee documents and employee documents that she had access to, but also I see the HR only documents, things like her I-9 and her emergency contact form. This shows DocuWare's kinetic solution for employee management providing access to documents based on very stringent criteria. If we were to switch users now and log in as Elizabeth Cash, Elizabeth is Peggy's manager. So she is now somewhere in the middle between the human resources administrator and the employee where she sees not only her own files, but can look at Peggy's departmental information things like her uh, her employee appraisal, as well as PTO requests that Peggy has put in in order to take time off. Now, as a manager, Elizabeth sometimes has, to, has the need to fill open headcount. Let's look at the process within DocuWare. We'll begin by entering a new hire requisition document. This is a DocuWare form that allows the user to fill out things like the job title that's, that needs to be filled, the location, department, the manager's, uh, the supervisor's title, who the requester is, and other information that's required for this form. Uh, and the last thing it requires is a job description. This particular company does not allow new hire requisitions to be submitted without a, uh, without a valid job description being on file. Uh, this makes it a lot easier for the human resources staff to post the position in order to get it filled with quality talent. The act of saving that document or submitting it causes a task to be created by the DocuWare workflows. This task now requires somebody from the human resources department to review this new hire requisition document to make sure that it meets the needs or the, the requirements of the company. Specifically, is there a job description on file? If there is, they can now create a job posting on whatever, uh, whatever format or whatever media, social media they decide, to, uh, they decide to post. This could very well just be on the company website. Once they confirm that, the task disappears and they can now go ahead and start accepting resumes for this position. Now within the human resources department, I'll begin to get resumes normally via email or it could be uh, through any one of several methods. But let's just say I get an email in with the resume and what I'll do now is I'll just simply copy that over to a monitored folder that DocuWare will ingest this uh, email with the attached resume and store it directly into, my, into one of my document trays. 
Once the document is in my tray, I can use a store dialog specific to the resume that will take several pieces of information from the email in order to pre-populate the index values, and the rest of the values I can get off the actual resume itself by using one-click indexing. So that once I've provided some background or some detail on this particular resume, I can go ahead and store this into the DocuWare file cabinet. Once the document is stored, it kicks into a new workflow. This workflow is where a human resources person or would now review this document to see if there are any current openings that this particular candidate might fit. Now you'll also notice that there's something in my new list. So if I go to my list and drop down, I'll see there is now an open posting in finance. This is a result of the new hire requisition being accepted and posted by the human resources department. So when I look at this task or the, the resume that has been presented now, I can see that there is an opening currently posted that this particular user or this particular candidate might fit into. So what I can do now is assign this to a decision maker. And I know that Elizabeth Cash is the one that submitted the original request. So I can assign this now to Elizabeth Cash. She will now become the decision maker in the hiring process for this particular candidate. Of course, if the candidate did not fit any of the requirements, the human resources has the ability to just reject them directly, uh, at which point the candidate would receive a very nice email stating that there's currently no positions at this time and that the resume would be held on file for future reference. Now that Elizabeth has been assigned that as decision maker for this particular candidate, she has a task she's required to review this candidate by looking through the resume and making a decision as to whether she wants to uh, interview them by phone, interview them in person, reject them outright with no follow-up at all, or simply to assign it to another person to take a look to see if uh, they may have any comments one way or the other. We'll try to streamline this process a little. Let's say that we're going to go ahead and we're going to submit this for a phone interview uh, we might issue some instructions like review our website. This is simply an internal uh, comment that would be put on the index value of the, of the document. And then I provide three potential dates and times for interviews. Because the only correspondence that goes on between the candidate and the company, it happens through human resources. So what I'm do, doing here is I'm providing human resources with three potential dates and times for interviews so that when the workflow picks up and moves further down the line, human resources can now arrange a meeting and they have available to them the three dates and times that I've suggested for the interview. They would then arrange that meeting along with uh, conversations with the candidate and let's say they decided on the 30th at 12 p.m. for this interview. And Elizabeth Cash now has a task. She needs to make a decision. So if I look at her open tasks, she has to decide hire, reject, or another interview. Now this process could go on in an infinite loop. We could send it to another person to interview either by phone or in person. Uh, we, and that process could go back and forth. Ultimately, the decision always comes back to, to this person, the decision maker, to make the to either hire or reject. So I'm going to say on the basis of the first interview, we like what we saw. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hire this person. The onus now gets sent back to human resources because we've said go ahead and hire them. Now we're going to go ahead and send an offer letter. Now the offer letter can be sent in any of several me uh, methods. Uh, it can be sent via courier, via email, uh, depending upon the requirements of the company that's sending it. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that we've sent this offer letter through our normal corporate means. And all we need to do now is to wait for the offer letter to be returned in a fully executed format, meaning it's been signed and, uh, and dated and returned to us. And ultimately, we are going to then 
agree upon a start date for this particular employee. Let's say we pick the start date. We can go ahead and confirm this. And now what I can do is close out this open requisition. I'll do that by applying a stamp to it that says this position has been filled by our friend, new employee, Joe Candidate. And by closing this task out and ending the recruiting part of it, we now begin the onboarding aspect. Closing out that open rec actually began another workflow. This is now the provisioning workflow. What this means is that the start date has been set for this new employee, so we want them to have everything they need in order to hit the ground running on their first day. So what we have created is something called a provisioning request form. So the task now is assigned to the decision maker, the manager of the person who is going to be starting on that given day. The task of creating this provisioning requisition and by clicking the link, it launches uh, a DocuWare web form, in this case called a provisioning checklist that gets filled out using the, the new employee's first name, last name, department, uh, their new DocuWare user ID. But we get to determine now which different areas, which managers require in, input on, uh, on the start date. So let's say that uh, HR needs to do something and the document automat automatically expands to include the HR section and the sales manager needs to do something. So again, another area has begun down here. So we'll say within HR, we only need to do the, uh, the standard options for uh, HR onboarding. But within, in this case, the, the next group, we'll go ahead and say we need some additional, not only the standard options, but some additional uh, options as well. And maybe those additional things are things like uh, provide a locker, uh, a file cabinet, building access and key cards and nameplate and so on. But anything that's required for this person to go ahead and start on their first day. And then we go ahead and submit the provisioning document. Once it's submitted, I confirm that the document has been submitted and now that task has been cleared. Now all Elizabeth needs to do is to wait to confirm that these tasks have been completed. I'll log in quickly as the administrator to show you the parallel tasks that are uh, occurring right now. So as the administrator, I see that there are currently two open tasks that are happening at the same time. One is sent to Elizabeth Cash, one is to Simon Stone, and they need to, to confirm or complete their tasks in order for the new, uh, the new employee to start on their given day. As the administrator, I'll go ahead and confirm and close these out. And then Elizabeth Cash simply needs to review the document, confirm that the new hire setup has been complete, and we can go ahead and close out the provisioning aspect of the onboarding. Let's take a step back though and take a look at the administrator now because all through the process of recruiting, automated emails have been sent out. And we can begin with by looking at the resume acknowledgement where we see that uh, the candidate receives an email saying that we've begun the review process of his resume uh, and he'll be notified of any uh, next steps. Then he receives one that says, hey, thank you for uh, thank you for your interest. And we set up an interview for you on a specific date and time with a specific person. Ultimately, we say congratulations and look forward to your offer letter. And then the last thing he gets is a link that helps him begin the onboarding process for his first day. This results in this link would take them directly to a DocuWare web form that would begin the onboarding process. What it does is allows him to enter in information that is common to all of his onboarding documents, his name, his social security number, his address, and then we would pre-populate that onto all of the documents that, are, that require it. This form, once it's filled out and submitted, will pre-populate documents that will be ready for him to sign as soon as he starts on his first day. A quick search now within the employee files file cabinet for 
any documents for Joe candidate should show us now things like the new hire requisition form that was submitted, the resume, the provisioning request, and the additional onboarding, the employee onboarding documents that were created by using the DocuWare form uh, that allows him to enter the information at one point and have it populate several different documents. This makes the first day much easier when all he has to do is apply the signatures uh, if required and just rescan the documents and store them within the file cabinet. Just a few additional features that we discussed but didn't really get into are things like the request for time off. Again, a DocuWare request form that allows Peggy Jenkins to request specific, uh, specific time off, whether it be vacation, uh, jury duty, bereavement, the number of hours, and if potentially there were more than one uh, set of dates she wanted to request. By submitting this document, it would trigger a workflow that would request that her manager approve uh, her time off, uh, and then it would appear in a list uh, on the dates that she was not available because she had requested PTO. Lastly, one of the other topics we mentioned was separation. So there is a process by which uh, a human resources administrator would fill out a separation form. Uh, this form would then be submitted. Uh, it would be double checked in a workflow to make sure that the correct information was entered. And once confirmed, the document would then uh, be stored, triggering a workflow that would cause the employee's status to change based on the separation type, whether it be uh, resignation, retirement, terminated for cause, etc., whatever uh, is appropriate for the uh, for the company to put in here. Uh, the employment status would change, and uh, all of the documents associated with that particular user would be modified to reflect the new employment status. So let's look back at the process we've just seen. A manager had to fill an open position. She filled out an online form that begins the automated workflow that allows the HR department to post the position and begin accepting candidate resumes. A resume is submitted and a candidate begins their journey. HR makes the initial assessment to determine if the candidate is the likely fit. The decision maker assigned to, the, to determine if they want to speak to the candidate. As many interviews as are required to decide were controlled and automated by workflow processes. And once the decision was made to hire, a web form allows the onboarding process to begin even before their first day by, following, by allowing common data to be populated onto forms. The provisioning process automatically routes tasks to only those departments required to take action. And this is just the beginning. Now that we have a new employee, the DocuWare Kinetic Solution for Employee Management will automate the PTO accrual process, simplify PTO requisitions, and automate performance appraisal processes. We can provide employee management services from hire to retire. Now the interesting part. What we've just seen can be configured and in production in a matter of days. So the only question left, when shall we start?